When it comes to her flowers, the example we're going to work with is going to be Jack in the Pulpit number four. Now, first, I want to call your attention to the name of the piece, Jack in the Pulpit number four. It is very mechanical. And there's a reason for that. It's actually part of a larger series. We will see Jack in the Pulpit 1, not depicted here, all the way through 6. And with each depiction, she gets closer into one element of the flower, abstracting it simply by zooming in to this singular element. Now, she's interested in the natural flow and form of flowers and studying the expressive nature of their shape. What we see is an image which is simplified to near abstraction. Really, it's the study of the organic nature of the object by strengthening the characteristic features, the tenderness of the flower, the color of the flower. But we're also looking at the sexual parts of a plant, so let's dig into that for a moment. Of course, there's always this argument about O'Keeffe's flowers. Are they somehow sexual or are they just flowers? Now, O'Keeffe herself says they're just flowers. But the argument is that these are identifiers, that she is dealing with her identity as a female, and in the early 1930s, this isn't exactly a time where you can depict uh, human female genitalia. So instead, the argument goes that she uses flowers as a stand-in. Now, how does that work? Well, basically, the flower is the sexual reproductive organ of a plant. When you give your mother flowers for Mother's Day, you're giving her botanical porn. Let that sink in for a moment. But moving beyond that, when we look at the piece, they frequently give us a sense of female genitalia, as if we're looking at the vulva, at the clitoris, etc. And there may be a reason for that. It may be that O'Keefe is coming to terms with her own sexuality, with her own gender identity. And after all, female genitalia is the primary identifying characteristic of women, at least in visual terms. So, that's a possibility. Add to that that many of her pieces incorporate the idea of a dark void, uh, and you get closer to that sense, it becomes a stronger argument when you consider the fact that when the New York Times will ask her husband, Alfred Stieglitz, whether or not the flowers actually are related to some kind of uh, genitalia, he will respond, it's exactly what you think it is. Now, this could be developing publicity, getting more people interested in her paintings, but it could also be him kind of letting the cat out of the bag. This is an argument that goes back and forth, uh, whether or not this is a possibility or not. Now, we know in some of her other paintings that she often depicts a canyons, voids, openings, and does so because she couldn't have children, and so she saw that as a reflection of her empty womb. But of course, we're on a whole different plane here dealing with the possibility of flowers as female genitalia. It's one of those issues that we probably will never have a good answer to, but just be aware that this is an argument that is frequently made, and you should be able to articulate it uh, to explain how an image of a flower, an abstracted image of a flower, can be read as female genitalia. In precisionist terms, what we also see is a very clear-cut, abstracted form, using those precisionist ideas of simplicity, of a very clean form. It's something that fits right into that movement, even though it's not a building or something that would be seen as a wonder of the world. It still exists within that precisionist realm. 